Welcome, everyone. Um, today we're going to do a talk uh, titled uh, Invest in Your Java Catalog. Um, it is not misspelled. Um, so we're going to you know, share some of the you know, thoughts we have and how to keep up with this new you know, Java release train that we have, right? New Java releases coming out every six months. You have to learn new features. There's also you know, other you know, JVM languages like Kotlin, Scala, Groovy. So much to learn, right, and so little time. So. Um, with that, we'll jump in. A um, little about myself. So my name is Donald Robb. Um, it's my first time presenting at QCon. Uh, I've presented a bunch of different conferences, though. I've presented four times at Java One, DevNexus, DevOx. I've also recently presented at the New York Java SIG for anybody who's got, been to the New York Java SIG. If you don't go to the New York Java SIG, I would recommend going to the New York Java SIG. It's a great place to learn stuff. Um, programmed in about 20 different programming languages. Um, uh, three of them I kind of represented here are the ones I really got paid to, uh, to program in. Um, shouldn't skip over, I guess. Like, um, I'm an instructional coach and open source advocate um, in the application platform and services team at BNY Mellon. Um, if you're wondering what an instructional coach is, if you've ever heard the saying, um, those who can do, those who can't teach, those who can't teach, teach teachers. I'm one of the teaches teachers. Um, so today I'll be actually teaching teachers. Hopefully you'll all become teachers um, like myself. So. Um, been somewhat active in the uh, Java community. Uh, I was a member of the JSR335 expert group, uh, which um, I guess nicely got Lambdas into, uh, um, as well as the Streams API, into uh, Java 8 in 2014. Um, I used to be a member of the, um, on the JCP executive committee. Um, I guess more interestingly, I am the creator of a framework called Eclipse Collections. Anybody heard of Eclipse Collections? If anybody's interested, I carry stickers if you want one. As you can see, I like stickers on my laptop, so I've got you know, at least three Eclipse Collection stickers on there. Um, also, I guess, interestingly, and we're going to actually be covering this today, I'm the creator of uh, BNY Mellon's uh, Java Code Katas, which are actually up in GitHub. Um, so you know, we're going to be going through some live examples today with the Code Katas. But with that, I'll hand it over to Aditi. Hi, everyone. So I'm Aditi Mantri. Want to go up to? Yeah. Uh, I'm Aditi Mantri, and I'm the principal developer in BNY Mellon in the Global Fund Accounting team. We work in the Agile team uh, and with a lot of cool technologies like Wadin, Activity Rules, Spring Boot, Hazelcast. And uh, I took my first kata with uh, Don around a year back, and since then I've kind of got hooked onto it. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay, so code katas. Um, so quickly, anybody know what a kata is? And you can read it from the screen. Yay! Who's taken code katas before? Been to Dave Thomas's. Famous, you know, codecata.com, and it's got 21 code katas out there. So that's the reference on the bottoms. But for those that don't know, um, a kata is an exercise for individual martial arts. Um, I use, like to use the example of, uh, you know, um, the Karate Kid. If you've ever seen that, most people have. Mr. Miyagi, when he's, um, you know, having Daniel Sun paint the fence and, and wax the car, this is actually a kata, right? Daniel Sun has no idea. He thinks he's just, you know, being put to forced labor. But he's actually learning, you know, structured moves for, for defense. Similarly, Code Kata, hands-on programming exercise where we hone our skills through practice. Um, code Katas that um, I've developed and have been working with over the years are usually set up as unit tests that fail, and your job is to make them pass. And once again, reference you know, the original Code Katas from Pragmatic Dave, Dave Thomas, from the Pragmatic Programmers um, at this site, CodeKata.com, if you haven't seen them before. So different Code Kata styles. Um, one style is uh, I refer to as refactor the code. Basically, with refactor the code, and this is you know, an odd one out, the tests actually pass. The point of the kata is actually to take the code as it exists today and maybe leverage a new library or language feature. So you're basically going to be refactoring the code is, and the test should keep passing. Um, another kata style called uh, fix the test. In fix the test, what you have is failing tests, and you're actually going to change the code in the test itself. Um, this is usually useful, and this is the style of kata that's used with, if you've ever seen the Eclipse Collections, kata uses this style, where basically you'll, you'll want to share maybe you know, the learning of a small API, and you have to actually use that API in the test itself. Um, so you're replacing, once again, missing code um, uh, with the, you know, fixing the test. Um, another style, which you're actually going to be seeing today, um, is called fix the code. And this is where your tests fail, but you're not going to touch the tests, right? The tests are supposed to be the way they're working, and you've got to actually step into the domain um, that's set up for you and actually implement the missing code. Um, so once that's done, you know, the, uh, the test will then pass. And then finally, um, and this is a, a you know, type of, I guess, kata, um, I refer to a sandbox kata, where basically 
you may have tests, but what you really have is a project that's set up with the structure, maybe like the Maven dependencies, pulling in the frameworks that you need. Um, so you can actually step in and just kind of experiment on your own. So it's really free form, kind of like Bruce Lee style. You're going to mix whatever code you want um, and, uh, you know, do what you need. So it's less structure, but, you know, at least set up so you're not starting from the how do I start setting up my projects. It's already set up for you. So um, I'm going to propose to all of you um, this idea, and uh, um, I, I earnestly believe in it. The best way to learn something is to teach it, right? Um, I'm going to also propose, like, the best way to learn something is to actually do it through hands-on exercises, right? I can sit here and talk at you, and we're going to do live demos and show you stuff. But honestly, the best way for you to learn what I'm showing you is to actually jump in and try it on your own, right? And that's when you're actually going to get the deeper learning. Um, getting back to the teaching aspect, if you have to teach someone something, you're going to actually have to spend more time learning it, because you're going to have to think about, like, how do I actually explain this to someone else? Right? And maybe I'm going to have to think more about maybe comments I'll leave in, leave in the code and stuff. Um, so I encourage you to you know, teach yourself first and then pay it forward and you know, um, share that learning that you have with others. And I think many of you are probably coming out to this conference today. You'll probably go back to your companies and blog about what you learned and hopefully share it. You know, similarly, like you can share you know, code examples through katas with others. So now what I'm going to do is give you the secret sauce. This is how you build a kata. Um, this is what I've used for, you know, the last, I guess, 10 years that I've been <laughs> investing time and energy into implementing katas. So first thing is identify what you want to learn. It could be a library feature, language feature, different programming language. Then you have to design a problem that you want to solve that will help you use the thing that you want to learn. Then you write tests, right, demonstrating that the thing you learned, you've actually, you know, gotten it to work. Um, you implement all of the code you know, to solve that problem. Uh, then you go back, put in some helpful comments. Um, and the helpful comments are intended, if you want this, you know, kata that you're developing to be used by others without you walking them through it with slides where they can do it on their own, the comments are going to be helpful to them. And then the final step is delete the code that you want to leave the placeholder for someone to actually go back and implement, right? And it's interesting, the code katas that we're going to be showing you today, I deleted the solutions, and I, I didn't actually put the solutions anywhere. So every time I have to sit down and do the katas, I'm doing it brand new. I have nothing to refer to, um, which, again, keeps enforcing the learning for myself. So you do these six steps, you've got a kata. This is all it takes. Um, so once you've got the kata, you know, then you can go through you know, refactoring steps to actually make it better, whether it's refactoring the comments, you know, refactoring the code examples, um, trying out different things, getting feedback from people as they try it. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Aditi, and um, I'll just quickly say before Aditi starts talking, we took code katas that um, I checked into GitHub last year. They were checked in in Java 8, um, and you're all here probably thinking like, hey, I want to learn Java 9 and Java 10 features. We're going to be showing you these features. We're not going to talk a lot about them, um, you know, but you're going to see them used. What we did was we took the katas that we had, and it's about, I think it's around like 15 to 18,000 lines of code in the katas total. I sprinkled Java 9, Java 10 features anywhere I could. They're all over the place, kind of without you know, too much thought, because it was a way for, to help myself learn these things. So um, I'm going to hand it over to DT now. Just, Out of the six katas, we are going to cover four katas. The first one uh, is the Java Lambda kata, where we practice and learn Java Lambda. The, the whole intent is to learn Java Lambda's syntax and also through iteration, know that we need name types for Java Lambda's. The second kata which we... The, the second kata which we have is Deck of Cards kata. Uh, over here, we are going to compare five different uh, Eclipse sorry, not Eclipse collection, but we are going to compare five different collections. Uh, one of them is Eclipse collections, Java Streams, Guava, uh, Apache Commons, and Wawa. Um, then we have the Donut Kata, where um, we are going to learn advanced Eclipse uh, collection APIs, like flat collect, top occurrences, count by. Calendar Kata is where we see Java date and time libraries, uh, 310 extra libraries. The code point kata is uh, basically deals with files and primitives, and JMH kata is uh, the is more uh, related to performance benchmarking. We have all the katas checked into our GitHub account in for the BNY Milan. 
All right, the first kata. So this is the refactor the code style of kata, which uh, Don has covered uh, when he said, described various katas. So we are going to test. It's a hands-on kata. So we are going to run the test first. So what we see is we have all our tests passing. And as he mentioned, that we have replaced all the Java 8 features wherever we could with the Java 9 and Java 10 features. So var is one of that. List.off is one of that. So the first to-do which we have over here is, can you remove the final keyword from the variable below? If, if uh, you have ever written anonymous inner classes, uh, prior to Java 8, we always needed to refer the variables as final, whichever we had to use in the uh, anonymous in a class. So we have reference result variable over here. But now we don't really need to mention final because now it becomes effectively final. It's, it's, it, the compiler knows that it's a final variable. So once it is initialized and used inside anonymous in a class, they become effectively final. The second to-do which we have here is can, can, can we convert anonymous in a class to a lambda? So what we are going to do here is replace this var with consumer string and use our IntelliJ to convert it into lambda. So the thing to notice here is we could not use var as it is with the lambdas because lambdas doesn't have a type and lambdas need a type. So if we see here, the code does not compile. It says var is not allowed with lambda expressions. One way to get around this problem is to typecast it. We don't recommend this, but we can do it. So that's uh, the example for that. Uh, we'll cover one more example here, which is a function uh, example. Uh, same, we have to convert the anonymous in a class into the lambda We pretty much do the same thing, replace it with lambda. And then the second, if you notice, we have, it also tells us to convert it to a method reference. So this is the syntax for method reference, which is string uh, to uppercase. This method is directly on the string class. So we don't really need the lambda expression here. Did the test still pass? So time to run the test. <laughs> and we have a passing test. Like I said before, we, we sprinkled the uh, you know var all over the place, and there was this unexpected you know thing in the in this particular kata where replacing <coughs> the anonymous inner class type with var had this knock-on effect of making it more difficult than to refactor it to a lambda, right? Um, so var works with anonymous inner classes, doesn't work with lambdas. Yep. Uh, so th there are Java 8 and Java 9 features in that kata, which we haven't covered everything, but it's present there. Uh, functional interface, lambda, method reference, uh, int range closed, uh, collectors, dot to list, stream off. Then the Java 9 features, we saw static off. So prior to Java 9, we had arrays, dot as list, uh, which is replaced with the uh, list of set, and then the other methods were introduced, set off, map off. Java 10 uh, features, we saw var. It does not work with lambda expressions without casting. So th the whole idea with var, right, is uh, it moved the type information from left to right. Uh, so with that, we need to have uh, the discipline to have more descriptive variable names. Um, and there's a very uh, uh, highly recommended link uh, for Stuart Mark's style guide for local va variable type inference. Uh, it's, it's, it's a good read, so I would hi highly recommend it to be read. All right, so now we have the next kata, and that's the deck of card kata. So this is the third, uh, uh, third type of kata which uh, John described, the third kata style. It's a fix, fix the code kata. And we are going to do live examples for two of them. That's Java streams and uh, Eclipse collection. So the whole idea is we have the tests which are running but failing. So we need to fix the code. Uh, the domain objects which we have here is the card which is nothing but a rank and a suit. The, it's, it's a combination of a rank and a suit. Uh, it's like ace through king and spade through clubs. Um, then card is, implements a comparable interface. And we have deck of card kata over here. That's an external class which uses this domain objects. So 
So every time we start with the kata, we always try to run the tests first. Run test. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all right, so all of our tests are failing right now. Uh, so we'll start, the first test which we'll start over here is all cards. So if you see here, the expected is we need the ace of cards. We need we are printing out all the cards uh, over here in a sorted order, and but the actual is null. And the reason it is null is because we haven't really initialized our cards over here as of yet. So one thing to notice here is cards. It is a type of a list, and we have cards by suit, which is type of map of suit and a list of cards. So we'll start with initializing the cards. So stream cards, so if we see this method, so this is implemented on the cards uh, class, and it is nothing but a Cartesian product, which returns, which is a, which is a flat map of a map of two enums, that is the rank and suit. And so that's how we are forming our new card. The next requirement that we had is that we want the card to be in the sorted order. And the most important requirement is we want it to be immutable, because we don't want to really lose any cards. Anybody have kids? <laughs> you ever given them a deck of cards and gotten the whole deck back? <laughs> make the deck of cards immutable. Yes, make it immutable. So uh, to unmodifiable list, this method was introduced in Java 10. and. Uh, that's what we are going to use here. Now if we run our tests. So we have all cards test passing and cards immutable passing. So next uh, test which we are going to code here is cards by suit and cards by suit immutable, which is this. So, um, so if you, know, as, as mentioned earlier, we have cards by suit which is map of suit and list of cards. What we are doing here is we are collecting the card and we are going to do a grouping on cards by suit. And again, we are going to collect the list to an unmodifiable list. So if I run my test now, what do you think will happen? Uh, will both the tests pass? It says it'll pass. <laughs> Just Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. Uh, the reason that happened was because even though we have our list as uh, immutable, but our map is still mutable. So we need our map to be immutable. So again with Java 10, uh, we have a new API, copy off, which converts the map to immutable map. So now we have all our four tests passing. The next uh, test which we are going to deal here is by counts by rank and counts by suit. So Let's go back to fix the code. All right, so now we need to count by suit. So what we do is this dot cards dot stream. Because we are dealing with Java 8, we need stream collect collectors dot grouping by card by suit. So the one thing which we should notice here is the map. Uh, it returns map of suit and long. So basically, it would be uh, hearts, diamonds, spade, clubs, and then the count. And uh, we are going to do the same. Uh, sorry. We are going to do the same thing for count by rank, and replace this with rank. In a good kata style, practice through repetition. 
So right now we have six of our tests passing. So this was uh, more or less the Java stream uh, kata. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, this kata, it contains five collections, uh, like Apache Commons, Eclipse Collection, Google Guava, JDK, and Wower. So the next one which we are going to do is uh, the Eclipse Collection style of kata. So the cards over here is the type of immutable list, and the cards by suit is immutable list multimap. We are going to start uh, initializing our cards, uh, instance variables, card dot lazy cards. So one thing to notice here, the lazy card is a method again on card, but we have the Cartesian product which is called on the sets. So sets belongs to immutable, uh, sets belongs to Eclipse collection, and it returns us the Cartesian product in this case of rank and suit by creating a new card, and it returns the lazy iterable. On that, the next uh, requirement was that the list has to be sorted. The sorted list returns us the mutable list, and we need to convert it again to immutable list. We, so we, all we do is to immutable. And uh, for our cards by suit, all we have to do is group by. That's it. So the group by method would uh, return us immutable list of multimap. So let's try to run our tests now. Yeah, in this particular card as well, what you'll notice is like each of the tests for the different frameworks always use one of the classes that's fully implemented, which is the JDK imperative. So this is implemented completely with for loops, you know, regular you know, pre-Java 8, you know, style, uh, you know, imperative programming. Yeah, so you can always use that as a reference. Yeah, and also, what you need to um, implement. sorry. So also one thing to notice here is the Eclipse uh, test of Eclipse collection deck of cards test uh, kata has the same test cases which we had for the JDK deck of cards set of kata. And we have our four tests passing. So the next one uh, which we are going to cover here is count by suit and count by rank uh, tests. So what we are doing is here is just counting by suit, and that's all we need to do, do for the Eclipse collection style of kata. So uh, the thing to notice here is we implemented two different collections for the same test case scenarios, um, and I mean, it's it's not similar, but it's still the same concept. Um, so, that's that. Yeah. Um, the things that we learned uh, in the Java uh, deck of cards, Kata, uh, Java stream, the stream uh, Java eight were methods which we had was sorted, collected, flat map, map. Um, then we had collectors uh, grouping by and counting. For the Java ten features, we saw var map copy of collectors to unmodifiable list. Uh, for the Eclipse collection lessons, uh, we saw that sets have Cartesian product, uh, lazy iterable returns. We, we have the two sorted list on lazy iterable. To convert, a to, to convert a mutable list to immutable, we have two immutable, and immutable list has group by and count by methods. So this particular kata um, came from a talk that myself uh, and two other gentlemen, Nikhil Nanavadakar and uh, uh, Leo uh, Lima, have given now, I think, probably like 10 to 15 times. It's called Collections Compare. And remember what I told you about building a kata, right? Find some problems to solve, go through, you know, um, you know, writing the tests, adding comments and all this stuff, and finally delete the solution. So when we gave the talk, the talk actually has all of the solutions in it. Then I went back and turned it into a kata, just deleted the solution. So it's now out there for people to experiment on their own instead of just reading, you know, slides in a PowerPoint. All right, back to Doug. Thank you. Okay, um, you can't make out that picture since I can barely make it out, but I will explain it. So, uh, one of my favorite katas, the donut kata. Who likes donuts? I like donuts. Usually, when I teach katas, um, I bring donuts. Today, I didn't bring donuts. I apologize, um, but I brought a donut kata. 
it's the next best thing. Um, <laughs> so anyways, uh, it's the same uh, style as the deck of cards. It's fixed the code. So we're going to have some tests that fail. We're going to get them to pass. Um, we're going to implement my, my favorite uh, test to pass, which is get top donuts. Um, we're going to find out what, you know, based on thousands of, uh, you know, polls I've done and classes I've taught. I'm just kidding. I haven't taught that many. Um, but I've collected stats of, like, what people's favorite donuts are. And we can uh, see what that is. So in the domain for the donut kata, it's somewhat, um, you know, rich. What you have is a donut shop. Um, you have customers who place orders and they get deliveries and the deliveries they get are of donuts. A donut has a price, which is assigned based on the number of donuts that you buy, right? Because if you buy one donut, it's one price. If you buy two, three, half a dozen, dozen, you get different prices. So there's a, um, a simple pricing algorithm in there to assign a price based on how many are ordered. And then uh, it's a combination donut has price and donut type. So you can see the donut types that we have here are Boston cream, glazed, old fashioned, chocolate glazed, vanilla frosted, pumpkin which is, you know, only shows up usually in like the fall. Um, <laughs> blueberry, um, jelly, and then Bavarian cream. So if your favorite isn't there, I apologize. Um, but we shall move on. So uh, let me go to the code. So we go to the donut kata. Now with the donut kata, and this um, is kind of interesting. When I implemented the donut kata, I said, not only do I want to, you know, teach myself advanced Eclipse Collections APIs because I can always use help learning those. Um, I also want to learn Kotlin. So uh, the, the Kata is available in Kotlin if you want to. And, you know, Kotlin's actually using Eclipse Collections underneath, but it's, you know, you're able to use, uh, you know, Kotlin lambdas and all the neat features of Kotlin. I tried to use as many features as I could because, once again, I'm teaching myself, you know, Kotlin. So, um, so that's out there as well. Um, there are two versions of the Donut Kata. Um, I just cloned the Java 8 one and, you know, created a, a Java 10 one. That's the one we'll... We'll take a look at. So um, in the kata, you can see, um, and it actually has a little bit of the Java time library in here as well. So deliveries have a date um, and time, and we actually need to find you know, all the deliveries across all dates to get the top donuts. So you can see the setup. Um, we make donuts. Uh, there's an inventory of donuts. When you run out of donuts, then it's time to make the donuts, right? We make more donuts? Awesome. Um, you can see, once again, sprinkled var liberally throughout the code here to see how it made me feel about, you know, the names that I had chosen without var. Um, and what we're going to do is go to get top donuts. So you can see, anybody agree with this? Boston cream and glazed, two top donuts. Tony, Boston cream, right? Yeah, absolutely. See that? I knew it. Um, <laughs> it's uh, proven through statistics. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, looking at top donuts. So we're on the donut shop now. Um, and oh, I should, uh, of course, run the test first and it should uh, fail. Yay, failure. It means I got work to do. All right, let's go to work. Okay, um, so some helpful hints in here. Uh, hint we want to look at the domain and use deliveries, which have collections of ordered donuts. You will need to flatten the donuts. Nobody likes flat donuts, though, right? like them, you know, especially if it's a Boston cream, you're going to get cream all over the place. Um, collect their donut types, and then a bag has a useful method called top occurrences. So let's see if we flatten the donuts from our deliveries. So we'll do this.deliveries. And you can see, like, on, on Donut Shop, it's got four different collections. Um, it's got a bag of donuts. Everybody likes a bag of donuts, right? Sorry. Am I the only person who's ever heard of Joey Bag of Donuts? Is that a real thing? I don't know. Anyways, um, orders, customers, deliveries. <laughs> yes, I'm here all night. Um, and uh, so we're going to use deliveries. Deliveries dot um, flat collect. We're going to delivery. Get donuts. Okay, so now we've got a flattened collection of donuts. And remember, donut has a price and a type. Um, now, um, I can either collect the type out of here um, and then do something with that. So one choice I have is I can collect donut and get the type. And this will actually give me a bag. I'm sorry, that won't give me a bag. That'll still be a collection, but I can convert that to a bag. Let me put this stack together. Um, And on bag, as it says here in the comment, there's a useful method on bag called top occurrences n, which is the parameter we're passed in here. So let's see if our test pass. All 
our test passes. Now, that was helpful if you knew there was a method collect, and there's a hint in here that there is a method called collect. Um, but there is another method, which makes this somewhat simpler. Um, if you have a collection of donuts, and what you need to really do is we need to count the donuts by their type, right? So let's count the donuts. Get type. Yay, top down it's passing. Okay. I'm going to go quickly in the interest of time. So in here, and this particular kata was set up to learn advanced Eclipse Collections API. So what we got to see was flat collect, count by, and top occurrences. Um, what I'm going to now do is go quickly to the calendar kata. And similarly, I don't have a Kotlin version of the calendar kata. You can go and create your own if you want. Um, but what I do have is a Java 10 and Java 8 version. So. We'll start with a Java 10, and what we're gonna do with the calendar kata. Um, so in the calendar, what I wanted to teach myself, I wanted to teach myself the Java time library. Because obviously, like, I'm not gonna learn that much probably teaching myself Eclipse collections over and over again, maybe teaching others. Um, but, you know, I hadn't really used the, the new Java time library in anger. I'd used Jota time, you know, back in the day. But, you know, I wanted to sit down and teach myself about the API, and I thought, like, hey, let me create a calendar, and I'll set up meetings on it, right? So I used kind of um, Outlook as, an inspiration for my domain. So what we have is a calendar has basically a mutable sorted set multi-map of uh, meetings. So basically meetings are organized by date and within that it's a sorted set of uh, meetings. And then what I wanted to do is actually have different views on the calendar, similar to like an Outlook. We all love Outlook, right? Okay, no, nobody's buying on that one. Um, <laughs> okay, so we had a work week view, a full week view, and a full month view. Um, so, um, you know, once again, similar to Outlook. In Outlook, if you go into your calendar, you get a work week view, a full week view, a full month view. Um, so, that said, we'll go to the code. We're going to implement one meeting, or sorry, one uh, method called has overlapping meeting. Because um, who likes overlapping meetings? My calendar does not allow overlapping meetings. But first, you have to implement this method in order to enforce that. So. We will implement has overlapping meeting. So we're going to check the calendar. Has overlapping meeting takes you know um, a local date of uh, uh, July seventh, two thousand seventeen, at noon. Who likes meetings at noon? Lunch. Lunch meeting is the lunch. that's the meeting at noon that we have, right? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> and then we uh, you know have a duration. Uh, I guess we could have a longer lunch meeting if we wanted. Um, so anyways, uh, we're going to step in. Has overlapping meeting does absolutely nothing right now, and. This is where we're gonna get to learn some things about uh, the, the Java time API. So we can step in and look, you know, we've got useful links here. Um, we're getting a date, a start time, and a duration. And if I'm looking at an overlapping meeting, I'm gonna have to see if the start time or end time fall into another meeting's you know, time zone, not meaning time zone, but the range of the time. And there's a um, useful class in 310 Extra. So not only am I using the Java Time Library, there's another library called 310 Extra, which is basically everything that didn't make it into the Java Time Library. Um, so I think it's also run by uh, um, Stephen Colburn. Um, a great little library has things like interval, um, which are basically two instants in time, um, and also has a, a local date range and some other useful stuff. So what I'm gonna do is quickly take interval, and I'm gonna actually get to use a Java 10 feature in front of everybody today in a live demo. Um, if I can find my calendar, there we go. Um, I'm gonna put the interval here, and this is one of the places where I don't mind using var. If it's a singular object, I can just call it var interval. It's kind of self-descriptive, I don't need to put the type again. Now, um, I'm gonna create an interval for this date, this start time, and this duration. Um, so interval has a useful of constructor, um, which basically takes um, uh, an instant and a, a duration, so um, thankfully on this class I have a, a time zone ID, and we've passed in the duration. So now I've got the interval that I wanna test with, and what I can do is um, I can get the meetings for a date, which is once again a helpful hint here to tell me to do that, because otherwise I'd forget. Um, and I wanna see if there are any meetings that satisfy overlapping with this interval. So maybe I have a useful method on meeting called meeting overlaps. 
and we're using the any satisfy with um, method on uh, Eclipse collections, which this is actually a sorted set iterable coming out of this. Any satisfy with takes a two, um, two argument predicate. And what I can do is the first argument is going to be the meeting. The second argument is going to be the interval that I pass in. And if you look at what meeting overlaps does, this is on the meeting class, um, takes an interval as a parameter, um, and will return true if this method from the interval class, a useful method from the 310 extra library. So you can see they've implemented overlaps for you. So if you need to do any time you know, comparisons, this is extremely useful. You don't have to write this yourself. Um, so with that, then I should be able to go and run the test. And and it passes. OK, so what did we learn? Um, we're going to show that you can learn more than you <laughs> we actually did learn here, but we learned a bunch of this. So we got to see interval of local um, date range. We didn't see. There's another method. If we have some time, I could go back and implement. But we're not going to do it for now. Um, you've gotten to see like local date. Um, you, if you do the next method, which is testing with the, either the work week view or full week view, you'll see, you'd see methods like with and plus days. And then we got to see any satisfy with. So how are we doing on time? Nice, we're gonna get good questions. We can go back and do more code examples if you want. Okay, summary, and then lunch. All right, we don't go past lunch. Um, okay, code cut is a great way to learn. Everybody agree? Take a code cut, you actually get to learn learn, learn API language. You can kind of see like, I don't know if you're kind of picking up from these particular code katas. You saw that we actually implemented the same kata in a different language, right? Um, you could easily implement that kata or any of these katas, um, except for the Java Lambda one, which is specifically to learn Java Lambdas. Any of the rich domain ones you could implement in Groovy or Scala, um, Clojure, whatever you want. Um, you, know, you could even do it outside of Java if you wanted as well. There's really nothing um, you know, Java specific about it. It's really, can you implement a domain? Do you have like, the features necessary to actually then implement what you want to learn in that library or language? So code katas, great way to learn library or language features. Um, we discussed how to uh, you know, build, go about building your own katas, and also the best way to, to learn is to teach, which I get from my good friend over here. How do you say it, Chandra? You're Latin. Thank you. What does it mean? Excellent. That's proving my point. Teaching is a great way to learn. It's in Latin. Must be, tr must be true. Um, <laughs> so anyways, <laughs> we uh, demonstrated several different code katas today. Um, and uh, you know, the BNY Mellon GitHub repository is out there. Um, the katas are actually in an Apache 2.0 license, so feel free to take it, do, do whatever you want, you know, learn stuff. And with that, we can uh, actually take some questions, or I can go back and implement the work week view or full week view if you want. So, yes, do we have a mic? Uh, I don't know if there's a mic or not. I'll just try to speak loud. Okay. How do you think I'm going to answer this question? <laughs> well, I know you're, you probably like the Eclipse Collections. Like you could even say what you like about your work. So there is actually a whole talk, which I mentioned before, called Collections Compare. There's actually um, there's videos on YouTube from DevOx and from Java 1. And I have a slide dedicated to what's the best framework out there. And it may or may not be Eclipse Collections. Okay. And the answer is, of course, it depends. Yeah. right? And you know what you get to see and what we got to learn by, you know, um, doing this particular code example of a deck of cards is to test out these different APIs that we want. And what's interesting is that um, if you look at our earliest version of the talk at DevOx uh, last year out in uh, San Jose, um, we started using uh, immutable sorted sets, right? Um, and that had you know, some you know, challenges for different libraries, but also like we were implementing in Java 8. And what you see now by upgrading to Java 10 the Java stream solution isn't nearly as terrible as it used to be because in order to make the, um, the collections and the map immutable, it was like pulling your hair out. You'd have to use, use like collections unmodifiable map and like the, the downstream collectors. You didn't have the niceness of collectors dot to unmodifiable list that we have in uh, um, Java 10. In the talk we did um, the coding, comparing the APIs. So that's one aspect you can look at. We also did performance benchmarks because everybody cares about performance now. 
we always, you know, start off by explaining this performance probably means nothing to anybody anywhere because who's going to be creating deck of cards in the volumes that would actually have performance matter? So it's got no real life application, but it's interesting for library developers if they maybe want to like tune their library, right, to be really fast at creating an immutable sorted set or list. So, um, so the talks are out there. Um, the decks are on SlideShare as well, I think, in a few places. So if you look for collections, compare. Um, but the best way, I would say, like, honestly, sit down and try them yourself, right? We put, you know, the katas out there, um, and it's interesting. We've upgraded, not only did we upgrade to Java 9 and Java 10, um, and, you know, uh, we upgraded to the latest version of uh, Kotlin. Um, we upgraded to the latest version of all the libraries as well. So it, as of a few weeks ago, it was the latest version of Guava, Apache Commons, and Vavr, um, and the latest version of Eclipse Collection, so... Any other questions? Did I hear you correctly that Kata uses Eclipse Collection from the book? No, the Kata does. <laughs> you actually will see some similarities, though, between the. Yeah, the syntax, yeah. Well, not just the syntax, the, the type names are, are similar. So if you look at the Kotlin collection names that they've gone with, and they've cho chosen a similar strategy that we used in Eclipse Collections, their um, collections, they have mutable collection, mutable list, right? They only have mutable collections today, but they, they use that name, which we use the same name, right? And they extend the JDK types, which is what we do as well, because we want them, you know, to be interoperable. So, but um, the point, you know, that kind of gets across in the Kata, we use Eclipse Collections because it was easier. It has all the APIs that we needed. We, you could probably just do it with Kotlin Collections if you wanted. Um, but we wanted to show as well, like, you know, Kotlin is a JVM language, which means any library that works in Java can be used in Kotlin. And the same could be true in, you know, Groovy or um, Scala as well, right? It's one of the great things about having a JVM language is like the entire ecosystem becomes available to you, right? So. More questions? Anybody want to see the work week example? All right, let's see if I can code it real quick. So I discovered this the other day teaching a class. I didn't implement has overlapping meeting, and then I tried to implement the work week view, and I kept wondering why I, the tests were failing with duplicate meetings. It's because I hadn't implemented this. Um, so, okay, what we're going to do is get the meetings for work week of. So this is failing. And what we need to do is um, step into the work week constructor, and we'll see there's two nulls here. So work week is given some date and basically all of the meetings on our calendar. And what we have to figure out, given this date, is what is the Monday of that week, right? So what we're going to do is say, you know, for date, and you can see like the hints here. Um, we'll do for date with, and we'll use temporal adjusters, and we'll do previous or same, and we'll do day of week, Monday. And that should give us basically the Monday of that work week. Because work week, hopefully, for people, starts on Monday and Friday, maybe, hopefully, normally. Um, okay, then the next thing we need to do is actually create a range. Um, and for a work week, what we want to do is we want to create a local date range. And local date range is from the 3.10 Extra library. So if you step into it, you'll see the package is org 3.10 Extra. I'm hoping eventually this will just wind up in a future version of Java time. But does it, it doesn't, so the dates until gives you a stream, but you can't actually do things, something like it contains, right? Yeah, because that's what you can do with a, you know, a date range, right? You can see that something is uh, in the range. Um, so let's do, we have the start date, right, for the range. And then we want to do, so work week, um, and local date range is inclusive on the from and exclusive on the to, which is, you know, very common in Java. So we're going to add five days, which will then, you know, hopefully include just the start date and then four days after that, right? Won't include the fifth one. And now I should be able to run the test. And voila. And you can see like the meetings, you know, printed out. And so once again, like the focus of this kata was to help me learn Java time, you know, features in 3.10 Extra. And you can see like, hey, I'm using these cool APIs available on both Java time and, uh, you know, then in uh, 3.10 Extra as well. Um, and I, you know, write the Eclipse Collections code for you so I don't have to do that stuff mostly. Um, and then, uh, you know, so on and so forth. Any other questions? 
We're good for lunch? All right, let's get lunch. Thank you.